The war has also brought about the downfall of the monarchy. In March, after disastrous defeats in the battlefield, the Russian people revolted against the Tsar and have declared themselves to be a republic. Early reports say they plan on calling themselves the United States of Russia. Ms. Pry, this was a major development in the international scene that might affect the war. We don't know what this great moment will mean for the world, but what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are, at the very least, Russians will finally see a modicum of equality. If you have been in that country as I have, you realize just how much, how much division there is between the haves and the have-nots, and they really have a lot, like the Romanov family. They seem to be living now in their in a retreat, but they're they're perfectly comfortable. Let us take this is our opportunity to see if the noble experiment that we that this country enjoyed 140 years ago that it can be recreated in another much vaster country that has <coughs> suffered so much through the war when we were sitting back at home. Senator Shafroff, this must be a major issue back in Congress. What do you think is going to happen, and how will this big development affect our boys now headed to war? Well, the, the leaders of the new democratic Russia have said they're going to stay in the war, so that, that's good. But I, I think the, 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 this new attempted republic has three big threats. First of all, a counter-revolution by the, the czarists. And in fact, Count Leo Tolstoy, when he was in Denver uh, several weeks ago at the time the revolution happened, warned about it exactly that, maybe now or, or when the war is over. Secondly, Karl Marx uh, called Russia the prison house of peoples, and most of the, over half the people in that country are not Russians. They're Ukrainians, they're white Russians, they're the Caucasians, they're the, the Baltic peoples, the Siberians, the Central Asians, the Muslims there, on, on, and on. And so there's a chance of quite a breakup or some kind of civil war going on. And then, of course, the, the third is the, there's a lot of communists in there who want to undo the democratic revolution, these uh, Bolshevik and Menshev Menshevis Mensheviks and, and other kinds of sects. And that would be the, the most evil result that could possibly happen. Back in, in 1846, Pope Pius XI said that communism is contrary to natural law itself. It would destroy the rights of property and possessions of all men and even society itself. Pope Leo XIII in 1878 called communism the fatal plague that insinuates itself into the very marrow of human society only to bring about its ruin. So if this new government isn't strong enough to suppress the communists, it'll be, it'll be the end of everything. I appreciate the knowledgeable quotations from some of our great popes. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, as I, I'm sure the, this issue has made great headlines in your newspapers, what do you think will, be, will come of it for both the United States and the world? Well, as you rightly note, and we've covered a lot of it, uh, one of the great threats, as the senator says, is that Prime Minister uh, Alexander Kerensky will not be able to rule as a democratic ruler. And I think some of the things we've seen out of, uh, out of him so far indicate that uh, he is not entirely committed to uh, the will of the people. Most of the Russian people, I'd be willing to take a chance and say that they are opposed to remaining in the war. And I think that will work against him in his struggle against the, uh, the communists. Uh, and so he's got to watch out for that, what I call the left flank. And I know that uh, President Wilson would, uh, if push came to shove, would, uh, would weigh in on the side of the white Russians. And uh, if, if something should happen to the Kerensky government, uh, we pray that it does not. And Ms. Griffith, as a fellow educator, I know you're a natural optimist. Are you optimistic about what we've seen in Russia? I don't think you can not be optimistic when you read the news reports. The ideas of what they're creating, what this country could be, are fascinating and wonderful. But at the same time, I also know that change brings unrest. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we see some more Russian immigration into this country, in which case my school will open or welcome them with open arms. Mm. I'd like to thank all of you for participating in our weekly discussion and our experiment with voice radio with all the students back at the College of the Sacred Heart and all of our participants here in our weekly discussion program. Thank you for tuning in, and God bless.